In today's video, I'll demonstrate to you how to place your photos into our templates for mug sublimation. I'll be using one of our brand new templates from the Shamrock Collection, a great way to celebrate your Irish heritage or to make and give as a gift to someone. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi everyone, I'll be using Photoshop CC 2021 for this demonstration. I've gone ahead and opened up all the documents that I'll be using and I'll just use the copy paste function. You could also use the import or drag and drop, whichever you prefer. So I've gone ahead and created a brand new document. It's 11 inches wide by eight and a half inches tall, 300 DPI with a white background. Now I will be using one of the 11 ounce mug templates for this demonstration and you can fit two of these onto a single sheet of paper. So let's go ahead and place that on here. I'll go to the file and I'm just going to hit Control C on my keyboard, go back to the new document and hit Control V. So I can place this up to the top. If I wanted to you know, duplicate this one, I could simply just do Control J on my keyboard and bring that down. So you can see that you can get two of these templates, the 11 ounce templates, on a page quite comfortably. So I'm going to undo that one because I just want to demonstrate this one today. So I've had a few questions about how to get the photographs behind the template and resize them. So what happens is um, Photoshop it works on the layer system. So you can see with this here, I've got this icon clicked here. That is the template. And then if I click on background, that is the background. So if I wanted a photograph to appear behind this template, I need to place it between these two layers. So if I click on background and go to our very first picture, and if you see a lock on your picture, just click it once and that will unlock it. I'm going to hit Control copy then Control v and you can see that it's placed that layer between the background and the template. So now I can click on that and I can place it behind the template. Now to resize, I'm going to hold down my Shift key and just resize it till it fits into that particular photo spot. That looks pretty good. I think I will make it just a little bit larger. And now you can see we've run into this problem where part of the photo is peeking out behind the template. So to resolve that, just make sure you have this layer uh, selected. Then you'll go over to the transformation tools and the one that, you, I'm sorry, the marquee tools. And if you don't see the rectangle, just click on that icon and then you'll see all the shapes that are available for that particular tool. So we want the rectangle uh, marquee tool and I'm simply going to draw a box that's just slightly bigger than that space where the photo goes. And once you see all those, we call them the marching ants in Photoshop, once you see all that movement, just go down to your layers panel and click on add layer mask. And you can see here it's added another layer next to this layer. And it's basically saying you've selected this white space and we've hidden everything that's in black. So that's exactly what we want. So I'll go and select my move tool again, and then we'll go to the next picture. Again, just click on it to unlock it. Control C, Control V. Just place that in the template, hold down your shift key and resize it the way you would like it. Once you have that in place, make sure it's still selected go over to the marquee tool and repeat that same process of drawing the rectangle around the space and then over to the layers panel and add the mask. Click on your move tool and then I'll go to my third picture, unlock, control C to copy, control V to paste, position that behind the template, resize it, Click the check mark, back to the marquee tool, draw a selection around it, and hit the mask. All right, 
then back to the move tool. So now I have all my photographs placed inside the template. So let's see what this looks like. So this top layer here is the template. If I click on the eyeball, that temporarily takes it away and you can see how it's resized all those pictures. So that's exactly what we would like. So at this point, you could just go ahead and send this off to the printer. Or if you would like to embellish it further, you would just go to the very top layer, then choose one of the shapes. I'm just going to go with a basic rectangle and I'm going to draw this rectangle on the top. And you can see that magenta line that comes up. That tells me that it's centered. There we go. And I had fill, uh, the fill color selected as white. If you wanted to change that, you would click up here and then you could pick your color. But you know, white is perfect for what I want to do here. Next, I'd like to go ahead and add some text. So I'll click on the text tool. Click inside that white rectangle and I can type something personal in here. I'll put uh, uh, Jenna out for a ride. And you could put anything you like in here. This is just uh, an example of how to personalize something. Then make sure I've got my move tool selected and then I can drag that into position or I can use the arrows on my keyboard if I prefer. Okay. So now that I've got that all done, I'm going to click in the layers panel again on the rectangle, then to the right of that rectangle, and then I'm going to add a drop shadow, a bevel and emboss, and you've seen me do this before, and then I'm going to click on the word stroke, and down here you can see you can choose the color. So if you click on here, you can choose one from the color panel, or you could choose one from the template, or in this case, I've chosen one from the color of her t-shirt. So then you hit OK. And then on the size, I've got it set for 13 pixels. You can increase or decrease that to what your preference is. And I think I'll make that, what's that, 18 pixels and hit OK. So that's how you would add personalized text. And you've got room on the bottom here if you wanted to do that also. But I'm going to click on this text layer again. That's my top layer. And then I'm going to add a piece of clip art. So I'm just going to copy again, go back to my main document, hit paste, and let's close in, do a bit closer work here, and pull that up. Now I know this is looking a bit overdone, but I just wanted to show you that you can add personalization um, you know, clip art, whatever, whatever you would like. And I think I'll place this right about there. Click the check mark, go back over to the layers panel, double click to the right of that layer. And I'm just going to add a drop shadow, a bevel and emboss. And then there's so many other choices if you wanted to experiment with that. And I'll hit OK. So there you can see we've added our photos to the template and we've even personalized it further and added some clip art. So now that this is complete, it's time to send it off to the printer and I'll go up here, go down to print and I have the Epson Workforce 7720 that has been converted for sublimation printing. If I click on print settings, this will take me to the Epson properties box and I've gone ahead and set up a bunch of presets already. So if you're interested in learning how to do these, I'll put a link up here and you can watch that video. So I'll just go ahead and click on the landscape, click OK, then I'll go to print. And you can see that Epson brings up a print preview for me. Now I always find this very helpful because sometimes I forget to mirror my image, but I had already done that in my preset so I don't have to worry about it. So that all looks great, and then all I would do now is just send that off to the printer. If you're interested in purchasing the templates that I demonstrated today, they are available on our website, poppyhilldesigns.com. Just click on the sublimation tab, and then on the size of the mug wrap that you're interested in. They are available in 11 ounce and 15 ounce sizes. 
you can see here's the shamrock collection right here download is done at time of purchase just look for that blue download button after you finish the transaction if you have any questions about how to use these templates in photoshop please leave me a comment below and i'll be happy to address your concerns so until next time thanks for watching